Hello to everyone and welcome to Energy Capital News. I'm Ana Tafoya and today I'm with Calixto Mateos Hanel, Managing Director of the North American Development Bank. Calixto will talk with us about the relevance of energy infrastructure financing for binational cooperation, for instance, at the United States-Mexico border. Calixto, we are very honored to have you with us today. How are you? Great. Thank you, Anna. And, and it's a pleasure to be here with all of you and, and, and with you and, and your public. Calixto, our first question is, what is the importance of enhancing environmental conditions and energy solutions in border regions? I, I think it's a great question. I mean, enhancing uh, environmental conditions, I think it's, uh, it's uh, and clean energy solutions, let's call it that way, along the U.S.-Mexico border can go hand in hand as the North American Bank have, have proven. I mean, that's something we've done. It's, it's what we have devoted our, our, our last few years of uh, investments. And we see the correlation between quality of life projects that provide not only environmental benefits uh, with a reduction in air emissions, but also economic benefits from the leasing of the land and social benefits like energy, energy reliability and wind with, uh, with clean energy projects. Why did the North American Development Bank broaden its traditional energy infrastructure approach to invest in clean energies as well? Well, I, I think it's, it's again an, another very relevant question in terms that in, in 2011, our board uh, expanded and, and the board agreed to expand the eligible environmental infrastructure projects under the charter. And, and to include the, the energy transmission or distribution infrastructure and renewable energy generation, among others. And since that approval in 2011, as I mentioned, the bank has provided and financed more than $1.7 billion for uh, 38 clean energy projects, which is the largest uh, sector now in the bank, bank lending portfolio. So. It has grown to be one of the larger sectors in what we lend, which is the clean energy. How could clean energy projects in border regions improve regionalization processes, for instance, in North America? I I mean, and I'm, I'm speaking more on, on terms of what NatBank does, uh, and, and which is we are a border bank. We, we operate in the border. We operate um, in, in either side of the border. So. Uh, Energy projects and along the shared border can lead both countries to improve regionalization in North America. Uh, most, uh, if not all, of these energy projects have private sector sponsors and off-takers, which are both public and private sector entities. Uh, with the incoming administration in the U.S., uh, it is believed that there will be a major emphasis on clean energy and NADB has uh, almost 10 years experience in both sides of the US-Mexico border in developing, structuring, and financing successful clean energy generation projects. I also believe that the recent enactment of the USMCA, uh, these international processes are better defined and, and with the help uh, and will help continue to strengthen the important bilateral relationship between the U.S. and Mexico. Do you think clean energy infrastructure projects at the U.S.-Mexico border can accelerate energy transition efforts regionally? I think uh, yes. I mean, the, the short answer is yes, actually. In fact, the bank uh, financed the first cross-border wind energy project in Baja, Baja California where a wind farm is actually located in Mexico, but the energy produced is consumed in Southern California. So, so, so the farmers in Mexico, they sell the energy and, and it's consumed in, in Southern California. And um, we believe that clean energy projects uh, along the border will accelerate energy transition efforts regionally. And actually, when you look at NADV's jurisdiction, which is along the US-Mexico border, uh, 62 miles north of the border and 886 miles south of the border, uh, you find that there's a lot of uh, deserts uh, and the desert uh, and perfect for solar. And in the coasts, there's uh, sea breeze and, and there's a, also very good for wind energy. And and actually, speaking about uh, accelerating the, the the energy transition. 
uh, we can really say that the bank has been uh, a key element in, in triggering the development of wind farms and, and solar projects in the Mexican side. And uh, uh, because uh, it was originally studies from, the, from, from NADB or NADBank, I mean, I use both, both terms, by the way, uh, that make, um, that, were, uh, that allow us to finance the first projects in, in Tamaulipas of, of wind, which is now a very, very strong uh, uh, state in that uh, production of wind, wind energy. So, so, yes, this regionalization ha helps accelerate the energy transition efforts. And finally, Calixto, could you tell us more about the Los Vientos wind projects in Texas and which could you say are the most meaningful benefits from projects like this? Well, the Los Vientos actually, it's, a, it's a, two projects, 1A and 1B, and, and those two projects include 170 wind turbines and uh, two electrical substations and two transmission lines connecting the wind farms to the Texas grid. Uh, our experience with the, most of these projects tells us that there's no, I mean, what, what's like uh, going to what's the most meaningful benefits of those projects? Well, of course, you produce the energy, which is you take, a, a, you use the resource because that's where you, you have a, a good resource. But normally uh, the, these are, are, are located in places where the land had no, no not really much use. So when you put these projects in that, you, you're giving a, a, a use to the land and you're getting a payment for the lands, which if they were not built, uh, the, the, the people owning the land will not have any, any, any meaningful benefits. And uh, um, there are also, uh, again, uh, other than, than producing the energy, other social ben benefits like not only having energy, but having more reliable uh, sources of energy, some economic uh, benefits, as I said, to the land landowners leasing the farms, and some uh, benefits for for I mean, there's there's a small crew, but there's people are living there, and then you add some uh, some job creation to the to the zone, so and especially when it's built. So I think those those are the, the benefits. And if you consider the environmental benefits, not only not only the energy, while you produce renewable energy, you are uh, you are um, you you choose not to produce with other means that are polluting. So actually, you are displacing what otherwise would be a pollution by by having this energy generated by uh, fuel oil or natural gas or coal or whatever. I mean, so. So there's the environmental benefit of those uh, of those uh, emissions that are not going to be done by uh, by reducing the, the, the emissions in the, in the atmosphere. Calixto, thank you so much for your time and your insights. Would you like to add something else? Well, no. I, I just to say that NatBank is really uh, working towards uh, energy projects, but we also do water projects. I mean, I know that's the topic here is more energy. But we are, are also involved in, in energy and water projects, and 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 I, I bring it because there's a very strong link between water and, and energy. So uh, if we're talking energy, we're talking water. We're also talking energy, and uh, and, and vice versa. So uh, the NADBank is is for that. We we work in the border, as I said, and, and we're uh, always eager to hear projects in in in, in, in the energy sector, but also in the water sector and the, and the waste management sector. You know, and, and there's also projects that deal with transforming waste into energy. So uh, uh, there's a lot of we can do and, and that will all, uh, that will be just uh, a reminder of what we can uh, help in, in that. Work. Thanks so much. And we also thank the people who are watching us. See you soon in another Energy Capital interview.